Hey guys, so I have another informational video for you all and that's on Citrix virtual apps and desktop service and how you go about choosing again what's the right option for you for the cloud-based version of virtual apps and desktops. So if you haven't seen it already, check out my previous video if you're looking at on-premise as a potential option as well. Um, in this video, I'll walk you through you know, a little bit of the difference between the on-premise solution as well as the cloud, and then we'll walk through the dif different options that are available for you for the actual cloud-based service. So really quick, I always think it helps to understand the architecture and what we're doing when we talk about the service version of virtual apps and desktops. So if we look here on the, the left here, you can clearly see it, it annotates here that it's this is an on-premise do-it-yourself model. So when we talk about traditional virtual apps and desktops, which is primarily what most customers are still running today, we, we are seeing a fairly good migration over to the cloud. But in this model, we have all these different components that are necessary to stand up to make the Citrix environment work as well as it does. So you have things like your delivery controller. So think of that as like the broker of the environment, storefront, which is a web server that users access. We have director, which is the monitoring server, which typically would live on the controller. We have a licensing server. We have Studio, which is the management console, which lives on the controller. We have a SQL database. We have a Netscaler, aka Citrix ADC, for remote access. And then, of course, we have our application servers or our virtual desktops, or maybe a combination of the two. And of course, if you architect it, ar architect it uh, via best practices, you know, you're gonna have two components of, of each. You might have two delivery controllers, two storefront, two net scalers for redundancy for your environment. So it's a fairly big undertaking, right? You need the capacity to manage this environment. You need you know, to have beefy servers, you need to have the expertise as far as um, an IT administrator or Citrix administrator that has Citrix experience, or maybe you're working with a partner that, that is managing that as like an MSP, for this environment. What the cloud version does is it makes the management a lot easier for the Citrix environment. So rather than managing everything on premise, all the management now lives within Citrix cloud. So Citrix has full control over the management components and you as a customer are still responsible for managing the application servers and the virtual desktops. So that lives in your choice of location, whether that's on-premise in your own data center, if that's in Microsoft Azure, AWS, another you know, public cloud platform, you have that option of where your applications and virtual desktops live. So that, that's really important to notate. I get questions all the time with confusion around, you know, I don't want Citrix to have access to my applications and my data. The good news is you never have to worry about that. Citrix is just managing the infrastructure for the environment. So the controller, storefront, director, SQL, that kind of stuff lives with Citrix. They provide full redundancy. They provide remote access capability as a part of the service. So you're gonna have some sort of URL, customername.cloud.com for users to access. Of course, you know you can have a Netscaler on-premise if you wanna create your own custom URL, so that's always a possibility. And then in your data center of choice or your public cloud of choice, you're gonna have something called a cloud connector, which is a 443 outbound connection over to Citrix Cloud, over to that management component um, to establish connectivity. So that's, again, this is kind of the option of the on-premise versus the cloud. Again, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the cloud. Um, ignore this guy on the right. This is their desktop as a service solution from Citrix. We're not gonna talk about that. But do notate that if you are looking to leverage Azure Virtual Desktop or any sort of public cloud workload, um, the LTSR version of the on-premise version of virtual apps and desktops does not support managing cloud workloads. So you're basically forced to move over to the virtual apps and desktop service if you have a future goal of managing public cloud workloads. So do notate that as well. So you'll notice a, a lot is similar to what we talked about in the on-premise version of virtual apps and desktops uh, around you know what are the different options that you can um, procure for the virtual app and desktop service. So of course we have traditional virtual applications. So that's gonna support a server operating system. So this could be again, 2012 R2, 
2016, 2019. Um, and a common misconception of this is this could be both individual applications that you can publish out to your users or a server desktop, an RDS desktop. So it's a multi-session desktop that users can access to and they're sharing their resources behind the scenes. This is available in advanced and premium edition. So there's no standard edition for virtual apps in the cloud. Um, and then there is a user and device or concurrent license option. And again, concurrent licenses are a pool of licenses. So this is more of a use case for shift workers. Think of like a hospital where they have three different shifts for nurses. It, and the reason that it's, it's a very niche use case is and why you want to be careful about you know subscribing to concurrent licenses is because they're about twice as expensive as a user and device license. We also have virtual desktops, um, and this is common misconception because this is only available in standard edition, and this is the desktop as a service solution from Citrix. So this is a scenario in which if you want Citrix to manage the actual desktop on your behalf as well, this is the option for you. You actually pay a certain number of credits on a monthly basis for the utilization for Citrix to manage these desktops on your behalf. And this also provides remote PC access as well if you, if you need that as a use case. And then lastly, what we most commonly see, um, really because it's about, I think it's about the same price as virtual apps, is virtual apps and desktops. So it's a combination of the two, you get a server and a desktop operating system experience. This is available in standard, advanced, and premium editions. So definitely check out that feature matrix so you can see the difference between the different editions. I'll post it in the, you know, the notes below so you can have quick access to that. And this also provides that remote PC access capability, which is all about connecting you to physical PCs, leveraging the Citrix platform. Uh, so I hinted at this already. And if you've watched the on-premise version of virtual apps and desktops, you'll know that I talked through this already. But, but really quick, concurrent is a pool of licenses. So you user logs in, they take a license from that pool, they log out, that license is freed up. So it's all about how many concurrent connections you have in your environment. It's about twice the price of a user and device license. This is great for shift worker um, type use cases. So again, I use that hospital. So maybe a manufacturing plant where they have sh shift workers and let's say they have, you have a hundred workers across each shift. That's 300 workers total. You know, only a hundred will ever connect at once. It's more price effective to go with a concurrent license versus a named user license. So the next option of course is a, is a user device license, which will intelligently use the least number of licenses possible based on how the user connects. So it's either going to use a user or a device license, but do know that it is still tied to the Active Directory user account. So after I think it's six months of inactivity, that license gets freed up automatically. And there, there are ways to automatically free up that or uh, manually free up, free up that license as well. Uh, ignore the bottom bullet point. So number three there for user device, um, ignore that. That's for the on-premise version, not for the cloud version. Um, all right, so choosing the right options here. So I mentioned there's standard, advanced, and premium. Standard is only available for virtual apps and desktops. Technically, standard's available for virtual desktops, but again, we're gonna not talk too much about that just because that's the desktop as a service solution. Um, does provide this, it does give the Citrix workspace experience. If you've never seen that experience, it's just a variation of storefront. Um, it's just a new way to access your applications and desktops. And you do get, again, the HDX user experience, which is really the bread and butter of the Citrix technology. It used to be called ICA, now it's called HDX. So you get the best of the breed protocol to connect you to your virtual apps and desktops. Next, we have advanced. So this provides you with the capability of having a Citrix storefront on premise, if that's important to you. Uh, and there are certain use cases where you may want storefront on premise if you want users to authenticate to a web server that's in your own data center, if you want any sort of customization to the storefront page and you wanna add things like your own personal wallpaper, all that good stuff, storefront, you'd, want, you'd have to have that on premise. You get workspace environment management capability, 
which is a, s a separate piece of infrastructure as well as an agent that's installed on the actual virtual apps or virtual desktops in which you can do a lot of cool things like um, resource optimization, um, policy management, things of that nature. You get custom delegated administration so you can actually create admin accounts and give them delegated permission to different sections of the management console. And then we have premium, which includes Citrix SD-WAN integration. Um, you get session recording. So that's the ability to start recording the session automatically and go back and view that recording. Honestly, that's probably like the biggest reason why I would ever see a customer move from advanced to premium is just for session recording. There's really not much else of a compelling reason in my opinion. Um, so most of the time we see customers that will go with the advanced edition over the premium just because you get pretty much everything minus um, session recording and director premium. All right, some other considerations here. Um, so identity and access management, MFA, get asked this all the time, is what are the MFA capabilities within the cloud version of virtual apps and desktops? And the good news is, is there is some native integration. So Azure AD, Okta, Active Directory, plus a token, but if you're using a third-party authentication provider that uses traditional radius, so think of like an RSA or a Duo, um, that isn't natively built into the platform today. Uh, I've been told it's on the roadmap, it's coming. I've been told that for over two years now. So note that if you are planning on using Duo and RSA, you'd have to have an on-prem Netscaler to support that. Um, the solution does provide 99.9% .9 monthly uptime on services. So do you know that there is some, you know, a, there is some downtime to an extent, 0.1%, which I, I forget, you know, how many minutes that is a year, but it's, it's fairly minimal. So that redundancy is built into the platform. It is a subscription license. So it is built on an annual basis. There's one, two, three, and five year options. I mean, I think there's a four year option, but I, I never see a customer go with that option. Um, as you subscribe to later years, um, up to three years, you get additional discounts. And also if you pay for everything up front, you also get another additional discount. Uh, Microsoft, of course, still needs to be licensed. So if you're doing virtual apps, you need Microsoft RDS licenses. If you're doing virtual desktops, you need that Microsoft VDA entitlement, which is included in Windows 10 Enterprise automatically. But if you are using Windows 10 Pro, you will need to purchase the, the VDA license separately. And keep in mind that even though this is cloud and everyone thinks cloud, everything lives in the cloud in this scenario, there is still some infrastructure requirements. Because you're still managing your VDAs, your app servers, your virtual desktops on premise, note that you still need CPU, RAM, and storage to support your on premise part of the environment, as well as you need. Um, you know, the, the capability of, of hosting a couple of cloud connectors as well, which are fairly, you know, bare bone devices. They don't take up a lot of resource consumption, but just make note that there is still going to be some sort of on-premise infrastructure requirement, unless you're using a public cloud environment, of course, in that case, you're just going to be paying for utilization to run that in the public cloud. Um, so that's all I have. I hope this was helpful for all of you. If you like this video, we would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, um, and yeah, take care everyone and until the next video. Bye all.